Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, today we are going to continue working with equations. Um, this week we're going to continue on from last week's work and build onto it and solve something called two-step equations, which means that unlike last week, these equations will take two steps to solve. Last week's took just one step. Now, um, we're also going to kind of connect how we can solve these, or how these equations connect to graphing and tables like we did um, in the last unit. Um, that's what we're building towards. Um, that's what I'm trying to finish off with. Um, but today, today really, we're going to focus on understanding why we're, why we're doing the steps we're doing. And the whole idea of keeping an equation balanced. So this is something I talked about during our live stream on Friday, but I'm going to go through it a little bit more, um, you know, some different details. Uh, I got an assignment to go through that um, kind of expands on what we talked about. Um, as far as the class goes, we are going to have one more summative. Um, I plan for it to be on June 12th, but I'll let you know if... Uh, I'll let you know if that's the official date very soon for our final. Um, our last test is going to be a small test. It's uh, going to be shorter than the last one we had. It's just going to cover the last few weeks of work we've been doing. It's going to be worth more than a quiz, but less than a test. So you can, if you want to call it a quest, that's fine. <laughs> so um, anyways, let's, uh, let's talk about today's assignment. So what we're working with in today's assignment is called something called algebra tiles. These are something you tend to actually work with, you know, physically in the classroom with your hands, but just understanding it through pictures, um, it works just as well. So I want to show you exactly what's going on. So first off, what you see here is I have a scale on the screen. Scales are used to weigh things, and the way it usually works is you put something on one side, like maybe it's 100 pounds, you know how much it weighs, and then you compare something else that you don't know the weight of to what you do know. So, for example, let's say we had 100 pounds of rocks on this side. 100 pounds. And let's say on the left side, we had just one rock. And let's say this was 10 pounds. Well, the heavy side is going to fall down. The lighter side is going to go up. They're not going to be balanced anymore, right? They're not going to be level. So equations actually work the same way. We want to keep everything balanced. We want to keep both sides level to each other. So, let's think about this a little bit. We have some number x, and you, you know, from last week, you probably know the answer, but let's, let's think about this still. Um, we have some number x, and we don't know what that is. But we do know for sure that we have 8, and we also know for sure we have 14 on the right side of our equation. So what we can do is um, represent this with blocks. I have eight blocks on the left side, so let's look for a choice here that has eight blocks. Okay, um, these both only have three, the top and the bottom, so I'm going to get rid of these. So it's just between these two right now. Um, both of these have eight blocks on each side, so let me just put this on our scale. We have eight. Actually, let's put the whole thing. Eight blocks, and then we have some number x that we don't know. We don't know how much this weighs, um, and we know each one of these blocks weighs one pound. Now, on the right side, we know it's equal to 14 pounds. It's, if it, I just think it's a little easier to think about weight. It doesn't have to be weight. It can be other things like we've talked about. But um, for this example, 
um, or at least for today, let's let's refer to it as weight because I think it's easier to kind of picture in your head. So we know that the right side is equal to 14 pounds, so there needs to be, well, we need 14 blocks then, right? Because we said each block is one pound, so the choice that is 14 blocks has to be it. This one does not, so this must be the correct answer. So let's put this on our scale. There we go. But I want to take this a little bit further. So last week we worked with one step equations just like this. And you know we had x plus 8 is equal to 14. And we know if we wanted to solve it, we could take the opposite of addition. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. And we can subtract away this number on the left side so it just leaves us with x left over. Right? We, we want x by itself. So we subtracted 8 from over here. So let's do that over here on their scale. Subtract 8. Actually, let me, let's do this. All right, let's subtract 8 from down here. Let's get rid of this. So we took 8 away, but the problem is if we just took 8 away, this side's going to go up now, and this side's going to go down, because this side is now lighter than the right side. So we don't want that. We want them to be equal. Right? That's the whole point of the scale. So we need to take 8 away from the right side as well. So let's see. We have 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's take these away, and it leaves us with just an x here on the left and six on the right so according to our scale here x is equal to six well let's see if that matches up with what we did last week so we started off over here x plus eight is equal to 14 we said we had to subtract this eight away and then we subtract 8 away from over here. And that leaves us just with x on the left side. And 14 minus 8 on the right. 14 minus 8 would be 6. And we see that that's the same thing. Okay, so these steps, these work for a reason. So you can think of these equations you're balancing on a scale, just like this. Now let's uh, let's move on. All right, so negative numbers, um, we got to think about these a little differently. So we can use just uh, we can use the same size, the same idea, but we're going to use negatives in this case. So, in this, so for what we have here, um, what equation does this set of algebra tiles represent? I'm not going to go into the scale too much because it starts getting a little, it's a little less intuitive, um, or a little, it's harder to understand once you start thinking about negatives with the picture. You still can, but um, I want to, I don't want to throw too much at you. So, just what you need to see here is each block is negative x. So this is like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, neg negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. We have negative 8 x's on the left side. So that means it's one of these two choices here. Now we have to count the right side. Let's see. We have negative 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have three rows of 8, so this must be... 24 blocks total. You have two choices. Um, well, these are all negative, so we have to pick the negative choice. All right, let's uh, let's look at this one. Now. Okay. 
So which set of algebra tiles represents this equation here? All right, so first off we have four X, four X's. So notice that each X is, this is positive, right? Positive in this case. So we're gonna use a positive X box to, re to represent this. So that means that these have negative X's here on the left, so, do the, so does this choice. So it can't be either of these. Get rid of these. Let's leave it to these two. Now, we're also subtracting 6. Now, remember, we spent a whole unit talking about negatives. We spent a lot of time in that in class. And we talked about how subtraction is really just the same thing as adding a negative number. Since we're subtracting 6 from this left side, what we can do is represent each of these blocks with a negative 1, since we're subtracting. So we need negative 6 on the left side, and both choices have that. Now finally, for the last one, um, we have negative 22. Well, it's negative, so we know it need, need to use the red block. Both choices have them, so just from here, you need to count up the right side, so it can't be this one. This must be our final answer. Okay, so again, I'm not going to really work on this on the scale, but um, you can do these with negatives as well, and this is how you would represent it with a picture. All right, so we said it was this one. All right, let's take a look at this one, though. This is a good question here, and I'm going to spend some time on it, because I'm actually going to show you how to solve this one. All right, so first off, um, let me draw a quick little scale here. Look at my, make fun of my drawing talents. Um, so we'll do something like that, and then we'll do one of these, and we'll do something like that. That yeah, turned out better than I thought. All right, so we want to balance these just like the others. So let's um, let's take a look at this. We have 2x plus 7 is equal to 17. Uh, let me center this a little bit. There. So let's take a look. Um, we know we need 2x's on the left. Uh, it doesn't look like we're dealing with any negative numbers. So let's see. Let's put our, put our left side here. We'll put this. On the right side, we'll put this. All right. Now we want to match this up. Uh, we need two x's, so let's add these in to our scale. And then we also need seven blocks. So let's look for a choice with seven on the left. Um, it's not this one. Not this one. It's one of these two, so let's uh, copy this. So we have this over here on the left, and we know it is equal to the right side, and we want to keep it balanced. And we know on the right side we have 17 of these blocks. So can't be this one. This must be this, the correct answer. But I want to take this a little bit further. So we're going to put this here. And let's put this up here. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this now so I can have a little more room. Don't mind that over there for now. 
That's what I used to record if you were curious. There we go. All right, so we have this um, this scale we're working with. Um, let me see if I can make this a little should be a little better. Okay, sorry about that. So we have this two x plus seven is equal to seventeen. Now what I'm going to do is balance this equation out. And I'm going to actually find x from just solving, just using the picture here. So we have 7 on the left. Um, I'm going to tell you this right now. Our goal is we want to get one of these x's all by itself on the left side. But then red, that's what we want. So we need to get rid of this x. We need to get rid of these over here as well. So first, let's get rid of these. Let's take seven of these away. And let's take seven of these away over here. So what we did is we had we started off with 2x plus 7. But then we subtracted 7 away. So I'm going to write down our steps here. We started off with this and then we Subtracted minus 7. And then over here we had 17 at the start and we subtracted 7. Now this leaves us with, if we subtract 7 from here, that just leaves us with 2x. And then on the right side here, if we took away 7 from 17, that leaves us with 10 blocks over here. So now we have 2x is equal to 10, um, and this is how we got it, right? Because 2x plus 7 minus 7, the 7s cancel out, that gives you 0. And then, of course, over here on the right, 17 minus 7 is 10. Now let's keep going though because we said we just want this all by itself. And so far we have two x's here. So let me, I'm going to take a picture of this over here, copy. And what we're going to do here is now, like what we did last week, is now we're left with, we're trying to solve two x is equal to ten. Remember in this situation we said if we're multiplying two times x, what we really want to do, or what we want to do to get rid of this 2, is to divide both sides by that 2, by that number. So we have 2x, and we're going to divide both sides by 2 now. 2x, um, I'll have to draw that in. And we're dividing by 2, and that's going to give us x. Let me, we're dividing just like that. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing over here on the right side. So we have 10, and we, we do one thing to one side of the equation, we have to do it to the other. So we're going to do 10, we're going to divide this side by 2, and 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. But let's think about this with a little bit more. So what we're doing is we're splitting up these blocks here, these 10 blocks, amongst these two x's. It's like, um, it's like we have two boxes here, and we're trying to put each one in the box. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this all in paint, but I think it's useful to see this, see me doing it um, in real time. So let me take one of these, or we'll take two, we'll put one over here, we'll put one over here. Let's do the same 
thing with these. We'll split these up, and then we have a couple more. So let's take these. And you split these all up evenly. You just think about it. You have two boxes. You put one in each box until you have nothing left to split up. Okay, so this is telling us that each x must be worth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pounds. Okay, so we could use that here. Okay, we know if 2x's is worth 5, or worth 10, then just one of these x's must be half of that. So we know each one has, let's get rid of that, get rid of that, and let's get rid of that. Each X is worth five of these blocks. And this will give us our final answer here. X is equal to five, and we already solved, or we knew that already, but this is how you solve it in the picture. So this video is getting a little bit longer, so I'm going to try and go through just a couple more examples. Um, okay, so what equation does this set of algebra tiles represent? Just read off the picture. We have 1x, 2x's. So 2x, we know that's equal to negative 1 plus negative 1, so negative 2. Read off the picture. x plus... 1, 2, 3, uh, there's 9. And we know over here there will be 13. And that's how you do these. Uh, let's do one more. Um, two x's over here, here on the left. We know we have, my, we have four negative ones. So we're going to say it's like subtracting four. And then on the right side, we have negative 12. And that's how you solve this. So, again, this is kind of, this is going to build into what we're doing the rest of the week, but hopefully you found it helpful. You can think of these with pictures. I think it's very useful if you can understand it like that. So, that's all I have for you guys today. Please take care, and let's have a great week.